Okay, so we're going to start this tutorial from slide number 15 from the PowerPoint presentation lecture number 13. I started a little bit in the last class and just kind of kind of pick up where I left off. So we're picking up right after discussing the legend. So in this particular part, we're going to talk about the GCA. So the GCA is the tagline to format a figure axis. As you can see, there are quite a few options that are involved when editing an axis. For instance, you can edit the color of the axis, the x-axis location, which the x-axis location by default is at the bottom, but it could also be flipped to be placed at the top. There's also the y-axis location, location which by default is to the left, or you can set it to the right. Your Y direction and X direction can be set to be normal or in the reverse direction. You can also set your X limb and your Y limb, which you create this uh, little vector of your X minimum locations and your X maximum locations. So it's basically confining the coordinate system of the x-axis or the y-axis. You can also define the number of ticks in the x and y-axis, whether you're using a linear scale, which is the default, or a logarithmic scale, which can be uh, very useful if you have a large variety, numerical variety of values you're trying to put on the same figure. You can also manually set your X tick label or your Y tick label, and I'm going to show you how to do each of these things. So, and this is all again all done with the GCA. So I'm going to write a little sample code here, and we're going to just do a little simple plot. Okay. And let's do plot 1 to 10, so just kind of setting the x-coordinate, x. And let's go ahead and plot that. So we generate this plot here that has uh, just some, some random numbers. Again, I'm just trying to show you how to use uh, the syntax a little bit. So to set the GCA, you just type set GCA. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set the X limb. So right now, my X limb coordinate is from 1 to 10. I can basically uh, expand that to be 1 to 100, even though we don't need it for our plot, or focus on a smaller area. So let's focus on a smaller area. So let's say I'm only interested in the X coordinates from five to eight. So you set your X minimum and X maximum and you run. So here you can see the X minimum coordinate is set to five and the X maximum coordinate is now set to eight. So I've just confined that. So I'm gonna confine the Y coordinate as well. So it goes from zero 0.1 to 1, I'll confine that y limb to 0 0.1, let's say to 0 0.5. Run. So you can see here I've confined the y limitations and the x limitations. Now what I'm going to show you how to do is how to make it so that we increase the number of ticks that we see on either axis. I'll show you how to change it for the x-axis. Let's change this back to the entire spectrum so we can see a little bit more. And let's change the x-tick. So you go x-tick and now what you're going to do is you're going to set how many ticks you want to see. So if we go back to our figure we see every 0.5 tick. So let's say I don't like that. I want to see every every one tick. So five, six, seven, eight. You would say start five, tick one to eight. 
So you essentially are creating a vector for your x tick run. See, now you've set it to be 5, 6, 7, and 8. Let's say I want it to be every 0.2 ticks. So you just change this increment to 0.2. See? And now you've divided the x limit into smaller increments. So we've changed our x lim and our x tick. Now I'm going to show you how to change the x scale and the x axis location and y axis lo location. So all of this is done again through setting the GCA. So let's say we have a wide variety of values. So let's change this up a little bit and put rand times 1000. Run that. So now we have a little bit of, actually let's do 10,000. Let's make it even more dramatic. Okay. So now we have a pretty dramatic Y scale. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the Y scale to a log scale. So again, this is what it looked like before. And this is what it looks like after you change the scale. So I basically set it to be ticking on a logarithmic scale. Pretty simple, right? Again, the default is linear. You don't even need to set that because that's just the way it is naturally. So we've set our Y scale. We've set our X, our ticks and our limit. Let's change our locations. Let's change our X axis location. So by default, our X axis location is on the bottom. It's what we're, norm what we're used to. So dot, dot, dot. I want to change it to X axis location to top. So if you go back to the slides, X axis location, I can keep it on the bottom, which is the default, or flip it to the top. So run, and see now my X axis ticks are at the top. Let's say I want to keep it normal, so it would be bottom, but I want to change my Y axis location, which the Y axis location default is to the left. I'm going to change it now to the right. And now it's flipped to the other side of the figure window. Pretty simple stuff. Now this is where things get a little bit tricky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the X ticks. This is really useful when you're plotting something like something about demographics or something about some a characteristic in your data set that is important for you to manually label the x-axis location. I'm going to generate a different figure here. So this is figure one. And let's do figure two. And let's just say we're going to do a plot one to ten of x set GCA and I want to do an x tick sorry let's do an x limb and let's just focus on one through five for this demo okay now what I'm going to do is I'm going to manually set the x tick labels to words that I feel are appropriate to describe my data set. So I'm going to do that over here. I'll call it labels. And this corresponds to what I have in the slides too. So let's actually, let's just use this. Let's use label But this is going to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I think each of these are supposed to be semicolons, but let's try it out. 
And let's set the X tick labels label, just checking, and set label. So here I'm setting this, uh, this variable label that I've just created, I'm setting it as my X tick labels. Okay. Oops, sorry. It's just the minimum value and the maximum value. Okay. So here we made a mistake. Oh, we didn't set our X tick. We have to set our X tick to be only ticking one, two, three, four, five. That's a, this is a really good learning lesson, actually. So what I didn't do is I didn't set it every tick to be ticking at one, two, three, four, five. So what MATLAB does is it assigns my label to every tick available until it is exhausted, and then it restarts. So this to me, I, I, I looked at it and I knew that I forgot to set my X tick label because I only set five labels. Sorry, I, only, I didn't set my X tick. So X tick, one, two, five, set my X tick label. Now I have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I have five ticks, one, two, three, four, five, five labels, one, two, three, four, five. Again, this is useful when you have something like a specific data set representing a, a day, representing a specific variable that requires you to set the label on the x-axis or the y-axis. You can also set y-tick labels as well. Okay, so that's it for setting axis formatting using the GCA. Here are some other example, visual examples that I included in the notes to kind of help you walk through. So this is kind of, this is the previous example that I went over in class and this is adding the legend to that example. And again, adding the axis formatting. So here's your label on the Y axis that I set here. So here we have the results changing the GCA. You have a confinement of the X axis from six to eight, confinement of the Y axis from five to 25 here. And we've changed a lot in the Y axis. We've changed the limitation. We've changed the number of ticks. This only produced three ticks. And you also manually set the labels to be Y1, Y2, and Y3. So we did a lot of changing to this particular figure. Now, in the next couple of slides, I'm going to explain how you add this date on the x-axis when you're plotting variables versus time. So the first step is to get the date number using the date num syntax. So you use date num and you enter in order the year, the month, the day, or if you want a complete date number, you enter the year, the month, the day, hour, minute, second. Just adding year, month, day, and you will get the proper corresponding date number, and there's nothing wrong with that. The more precise the moment you're looking for, the more details you need to give MATLAB. So you can use the date num to get the date number associated with a specific day. So this date num is saying year zero, month one, day one, which is literally the first day of existence. We can use date num to find uh, more realistic dates such as um, October 1st, 2002, that corresponds to date number 731,490. So this particular date number corresponds to this date in our calendar, okay? 
Day number is so convenient because you can determine a specific set of date ranges. For instance, here. So check out what I'm doing. I'm saying give me the date num from January 1st, 2001. And then I'm pivoting by one. What this is doing is it's moving this date number by one until we reach this date. So this is what's happening here. So So when you enter this, okay, you're, what you're getting is a vector full of date numbers. And I'm pivoting by one because this is from this is one date, this is another date, this is another date, and another date. Each date, okay, has a specific number. So if we go back here we can grab this one, set that. Now if I wanted to just change to the next day, see this date number just moves by one, okay? If I want a specific uh, hour, minute, second, I would have to specify more. Let's say hour, uh, 12 minute, five second, so do you see, let me do format long so you can see the number. So this number is still uh, 731,490.5035879629. So it's still within this date frame, it's still greater than this, right? Because this is at hour zero, minute zero, second zero, but it's still less than this because it hasn't pivot to the next day. So again, if we run this, kind of cheating because you can see the slide, okay? And we run the length of n, do you see that this is moving by one day from the beginning, the first day of the year to the last day of the year? So we're expecting to have 365 days. So if you ever wanted to know if a specific year was a leap year, for instance, 2000 I know is a leap year, you can run this and do the length of n, which gives you 366 days associated with this year. Okay, this is a really, really useful tool that will help you a lot for your homework. You can get the date range you can get, it'll help you find the missing date in your homework. It will help you find, it, it's, it's incredibly useful, okay? Try it out. Okay, so again, in order to get this date on the x-axis, you get your date num first, and then you get what's called, you set what's called the date tick, okay? The date tick indicates the axis you're assigning the date to, so in this case it would be the X and the format you want. So if you type help date tick, it provides a little bit of information. So it says date tick, tick axis, date form, where ticks axis is just you specifying which axis you want to change. And so for our purposes, we're always going to change the X axis because that's usually where you would find the date. And the date form, there were 31 potential date forms. I've highlighted three of my favorites, okay, where you basically enter this form, the, this, this string, okay, where you can put single quote M, the MM dash, sorry, a uh, slash DD slash year year, and it looks like this, or you can just do Monday, just like this. Or you can do month, day, and then, and then uh, four Ys for a full year. And that's pretty much similar to what I wrote. So the general format when setting dates on the x-axis is to, again, set the date num, year, month, day, plot 
n, you have to plot n versus whatever variable you're plotting, then set date tick to the x-axis and you set your format. If you use this example exactly, this will help you with your homework in creating the plots with the date on the x-axis. Now, when I was generating this tutorial, I thought of another really useful syntax in MATLAB, and that's called DateVec, where uh, you can get the date back from the DateVec uh, syntax. So just as a hint, I did use DateVec in um, printing miss the missing days to a file. I basically found the missing day using date num, and then once I got that day, I converted it into date vec, and I saved that. So here's an here's a, an example. So in a previous example, I got the date number for October first, two thousand and two, which was uh, seven hundred and thirty one thousand four hundred and ninety, and I got and then you can get the date vec of n. So the date vec of n. Again, it's going to spit out the year, the month, the day, hour, minute, second. There really isn't any way to cut off the hour, minute, second. It's just the way that the date vec provides the um, proper number. But again, this is just to show that this number corresponds to the very, very beginning moment of this day. Super useful. Highly recommend it. Again, when I saved the date... Uh, of missing days, I grabbed my month, my day, and my year, and I put it into a file. So in the next uh, couple of slides, I'm just going to show you how to do the text formatting. And text formatting is can be used in any of these uh, objects. So it could be the legend, uh, X label, Y label, GCA, or title. So you can set any of these labels to your figure. So let's do that with this previous example. Okay, so we plot this. So now let's do X label. Um, let's do dates. And let's do font size. Let's increase the font size. The font size in general is pretty small. So I'll show you what it looks like. It's pretty small. So I'm going to increase it to about 16. And so you can see I set my, I increase my X label here to a, a larger size. You can, as I stated in the slide, you can uh, adjust the font size to any of these labels. So I'm going to change the GCA, which the GCA sets my axes. So I'm going to change and I'm going to increase the size of these. So I'm just going to copy that, put that there, run. And so now my x-axis and my y-axis labels are much, much larger. I like it that way. Okay. Now we can change the font weight. The font weight is just making it bold or light or demi. So I like to make my titles bold. So let's do title, sample script, and you just put font weight bold. So this made it uh, a little more bold for the title. So I'll show you what it looks like without it. Run. This is actually something new with the most recent uh, version, is it does bold the, ti the title automatically, but it definitely does not, not bold the other labels. So let's, let's put it somewhere more useful here. There. So now we've made this bold as well. Much different font size, right, compared to the previous figure. So we can change a font angle to italic. I'll let you play around with that. Okay. 
The next step is to kind of walk you through the bar plot. So the line plot is just, you know, a lot, it's called a line series connection. A bar plot is similar to a histogram, right? So it's a bar going from the X axis label straight up to the coordinate, the, um, the associated Y axis label. Okay. There's a couple of different ways to do this. You can bar any series of points just by itself without setting the X axis. The default for this would be setting from one to the length of your input, or you can set your X axis coordinate system as well. So let's try that. Oh, and also the default color when you're using the bar graph is blue, but you can also set this color um, in line when you're generating a bar graph. So let's do generating a bar graph. Let's do figure three. And let's do this bar. So we're just going to bar graph our previous plot. See? So if we didn't have all the confinement, which we unfortunately do, it would basically look the same. Actually, I'll show you. Hold on. Plot this. And let's make it red. So as you can see, this red line is the line series graph, right? And the bar plot is just a, a graph going from the x-axis coordinate, coordinate up to the associated y value. Pretty simple. Now, if I wanted to change this color, I would have to do it in here as just setting the color. You can't set a line series. You can't set a marker. You can only set a color for a bar graph. So see, now I made it black, okay? What generally happens with a bar graph, which I kind of get kind of irritated about, is it adds a lot of space at the ends of the graph. So I like to confine it um, using the GCA. So set GCA, XLIM, let's set it one to 10. And see, that gets rid of all that excess space on the ends of the bar graph. Okay, so this next slide is probably going to be the most useful and it's kind of walking you through how to edit your figure uh, using what's called the figure properties. So there are six steps um, to get you through editing your figure without having to um, remember the code or look the code up. The problem is that you know me. I want it in the code, um, I just don't care how you go about getting it in there. So I'm going to step you through each of these six steps. So you can refer to these six steps in the slides as I step you kind of through this. So I'm just going to run this real quick. Okay. So this is just our sample script that we've been working on. And I'm going to show you something. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to select this Arrow, this arrow, which if you hover over it, it says edit plot. Then I want you to click on the line series. Then I want you to right click and this pull down menu will pop up. I want you to go to show property editor. Okay, what's going to pop up is this little menu here. So you can change the line type. You can change a marker. Um, you can change the, sorry, you click anything else, it'll change it. You can change the marker face here, right? Um, there's also more properties. So if you go to the more properties legend, you can kind of look around and see that you can also change. I mean, you, you could have done that here too, but you can change the marker size. Um, you can change the X data, the Y data. So there's a lot of things that you can change in this uh, properties interface. But again, you know me, and I'm not going to accept a graph that isn't coded. 
So I'm going to show you what to do. So now we've changed our graph. Let me change this color to that green color. And let me increase the line width. So we made a lot of changes, right? It's too much. Okay. So I made a lot of changes, right? So now what I want you to do is I want you to, again, click on the line series. So this is not highlighted. This is highlighted. Right click. And then I want you to go to show code. So what this does is it generates a, a, a simplistic code that you can use. So do you see here this plot x1, y1? Well, if you just plot this, just so you know, x1, y1 doesn't exist, right? It's a generic description of the plot that you've created. But what you can do from this is you can copy or you know remove whatever you want to do all of the formatting features that you've selected in the property editor. So you go here and let's edit this one and you're going to edit all of those things in the line series. So this is the lot the same all of this is in plot, right? So you can highlight this and put this right here. Okay? So I've just copied this whole section and put it right after my line series for figure two. And don't forget that comma there, okay? Now you can run the section. And do you see? Now you have incorporated all of the line series changes from the property editor and now you've hard coded it into MATLAB. Okay. So now what I, the next thing that I want you to do is this is going to be part of this video assignment. I want you to generate this figure. So if this was done in class, we would pair up, we would work together to generate this figure, but you're going to do this assignment at home. And again, you can pair up at home. It's, it's a pretty, it's a pretty easy plot to get done. I do want this plot done before our next class which is going to be on the 26th, okay? Um, there's a couple of things that I'm going to highlight that are on the slide that are useful. The first thing is that you can turn what's called grid lines. You can turn them on by just typing grid on, okay? You can also subscript here in the legend or anywhere, anywhere that involves script, the Y label, the X label, you can subscript by um, un using underscore and then subscripting whatever it is you're trying to subscript you just whatever follows that so for this you're subscripting more than one thing so in order to subscript more than one script you in place in I mean you enclose with these squiggly brackets okay you can also superscript in the in here and superscripting is just the carrot okay so go ahead, have some fun, play around with this, generate this figure, upload the code to Moodle. I will have a space for you to upload this code. And again, please do this by the 26th. Now the next slide just walks you through how to save a figure. So there are approximately, you know, three, four steps to do this. So let me pull up one of the figures. So figure two. You go to File, Export Setup, okay? Now, um, you can change the rendering. So the rendering is just to increase the resolution. Um, you don't wanna make it, if you make it very, very high resolution, your file size is gonna be very large because it, you know, the increase the resolution, the more pixels that you have, um, it just requires more storage. So since you're just printing, I would just change it to 150 and then you go to export so you save your file name whatever you want to save it as so figure 2 and you see here if you save it as a dot fig um, you can only open it in MATLAB um, but if you go to the pull down menu there are a lot of options for you to save I always recommend a PNG that's my, excuse me, 
my favorite type of um, format. So you can use that, you can use JPEG, whatever you want, okay? And then you just save it. So those are the simple steps to save your figure window. Okay, well, if you have any questions about this tutorial, please let me know. I will be happy to answer anything.